So we're back. I, I don't know if you had an opportunity during the break to look over some of the details. Um, I just tweeted it out, and if you want to have an opportunity to do that, please go to uh, at CNN Ashley. That's my Twitter account, and you'll see the indictment for one Edward Bagley Sr., 46 years old, about to spend only 20 years. If you think that's long? 20 years for the crimes that he committed against a 16-year-old girl. I want to bring in our legal analysts, uh, Danny Savalos and Jeff Gold. Uh, well, let me just start with you, Jeff. How do you end up at 20 years when Ariel Castro almost could dwarf this case with the torture, uh, and he got a thousand years. Why would this man get only 20 years in a federal case? Right, and there are there are facts in here that are actually worse, where he went on the internet and put her on the web. Be careful. And, I just want to give a warning. Uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah I'm is not, a, not the details, but yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of details that are worse. But what I suspect here is this. This uh, poor victim here was both emotionally and physically disabled. He picked her out. I assume there are some problems with her testimony. You know, he wasn't charged with kidnapping, for example, or restraints, so the statements by the girl may have been uh, uh, ambiguous as to uh, how much she participated, how much she consented. As wrong as that may seem, I'm sure the prosecutors felt somewhat handicapped themselves, and that's why they gave this plea agreement. But I agree, it's a shockingly light plea agreement that this man would get out by the time he's 66, given the things that he did. Yeah, because that's not a rehabilitatable person, if we can even call him a person at this juncture. Danny, in this circumstance, you have multiple players. Other men participated in the rapes and the torture. Begley's wife was involved. They're all going to be sentenced. Is this a case of prosecutors also being handicapped by defendants pointing at each other and deflecting blame on each other and making the prosecution tougher? Not so much. Federal uh, crimes statutes are written very broadly, and as soon as you start using the Internet or any part of interstate commerce, it gives the federal government that nexus to pile on charges. So to the extent people are upset about a 20-year sentence, the one count that he did plead to carries a 10-to-life uh, statutory minimum and maximum. So why so, they settle at 20? Well, that that always believe me, the U.S. Attorney's Office is not in the business of going lenient on on offenders like this. So that has to reflect in their mind the relative strength of their case. There have to be problems with the case that we just don't know about, and the U.S. Attorney's Office did not feel comfortable going to trial with those facts. Okay, there's no federal murder statute, but we do have forced abortions, which we saw play into the Ariel Castro situation. So, Jeff, is it possible that once this federal case shakes? Out, is finished, the sentencing is done, the state can come after him for murder and then put him away for life after his 20 That's years. That's a very complicated question because the states vary on what they consider to be murder, especially when you're talking about abortion. Second of all, we don't really know there were. There was no medical evidence that she was ever pregnant. It's probably from her statement saying this is what occurred, but they would need uh, more medical evidence of that. And without that medical evidence, I don't think so. It's possible other crimes will arise and he can be prosecuted and the plea agreement allows for that. And just, I'm gonna go there just quickly though, five seconds. There's a death penalty statute in Missouri. Can yeah, they do they that could, too? And remember, it's a separate sovereign. The state can go after that if it exists. And it appears from even the plea agreement that the federal government contemplated that as well. They left out the issue of murder to be revisited possibly later. All right, guys, thank you. I'm sorry, it was just such a disturbing, uh, incredibly disturbing case. And it's even more disturbing we can't say what happened because it's just that awful. Danny Savalas, Jeff Gold, thank you for your insight. Coming up after the break.